presenting a new exciting radio program featuring the thrilling adventures of an amazing and incredible personality, faster than an airplane, more powerful than a locomotive, impervious to bullets. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird, it's a plane. It's a podcast. Race a high-powered bullet to the target. Lift tremendous weight and spend solid steel in his bare hands. Hello everybody out there and welcome back finally to another episode of It's a Podcast. Been away for a while and that's due to a lot of reasons. There was San Diego Comic Con, um, I got overpiled, uh, overstocked with work um, through June and July, so... Now that everything's out of the way, It's a Podcast is back in full swing, and I have with me here, Brant Fowler. Hello, Brant. Eat, sleep, conquer the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wasn't it eat, sleep, beat the podcast? That would... Eat, sleep, conquer the street. Fine, we'll go with that one. Wrestling, everybody. <laughs> Or you should watch it when you're a child, and then when you grow up and understand things better, not so much. Hey, I still watch it, and I'm older than you. But you're growing up still. I'll never stop growing. (laughs) Exactly, there you go. I'm younger than you, so I don't really care about wrestling. I care about the toys. Wrestling's awesome. Of course it is. Until Hulk Hogan ruins it, and then we have to start over. DNA reference right there, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Tons of Hulkamaniacs hate me right now, but TNA reference anyway. Eh, that's okay. You know. <laughs> TNA got spiked. Exactly. Like, literally, spiked off the network. <laughs> uh, puns. So, anyway, I'm back. Brant's back. Brant, you moved recently. You want to talk about that for a little bit? Let everybody know? Yeah, sure. Um,. I moved. Thank you. <laughs> no, I moved uh, from Kentucky to Texas. Was it a fun move? Fun might not be the right word. <laughs> it was uh, um, a long trip. Uh, <laughs> no, it was it was fun. It was fun. Uh, yeah, so it's it's been fun here. I've been here for three weeks now. Doesn't seem like that long, huh? Do you have your 10-gallon hat yet? No, I don't have a 10-gallon hat. I don't have boots, and I haven't seen anybody with either of those yet. So, there you go. Have you ridden a horse yet? (laughs) I rode a horse in Kentucky. I'm from... I lived in Kentucky, man. Come on. (laughs) I know. It's just... just, I just had to throw it out there. Kentucky. Horse capital of the world. That's very true. Kentucky Derby. Exactly. The more you know. <laughs> Churchill Downs, Keeneland, all of it, Kentucky. So, yes, I've ridden a horse. But not since I've been here. Okay, I, Dad, you're one up on me. I've, I've ridden a motorcycle, but that's a different story. I have to. But I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> but not, not driving it. <laughs> I was oh. on the back. No, 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 I've ridden one. But, again, we won't talk about that. Okay. Well, there you go. (laughs) So, we're here today, finally, to go over some solicits, uh, the solicits for DC and Marvel that are coming out, um, the comics that are coming out in October. And a couple other mentions from other companies as well. Right. Yep. And we're going to cover two books. We're going to discuss two books. And then we're going to... Now, this podcast episode is going to um, be a part one or a prequel to the actual Zone 4 podcast, which Brant and I will be recording tomorrow, which we're recording this on Wednesday. It's going up Thursday, and we're going to be recording Zone 4 Thursday going up Friday. So this is going to be a prequel to our talk about San Diego Comic-Con. The news came out this week, uh, this past weekend. Tommy was all excited about it. Tommy was very excited about it. And um, we're going to discuss a little bit of it here. 
We're gonna give like a broad um thought. Our like, Brent, you explain it. Maybe you'll get it better than me right now. <laughs> we're uh we're gonna do a basic overview here, and we'll go into detail on a few select topics on Zone Four. Uh, you know, depending on how that goes. So, was that better? Basically? Yes. Okay. There you go. And uh, so, yeah, and then at the end of the show, like always, we'll do the rundown. And then I actually have a special mention. Uh, I would like the uh, special shout out that I would like to do at the end of this episode. Not to you. <laughs> Tommy was doing the shout out for you. That's what that was. So when we get to the shout out part, Brent, if you want to edit that in, go right ahead. <laughs> shout out. He can Not do it on cue. Oh. He can do it. I'm sure he can. I have faith. We'll just say, hey, Tommy. <laughs> oh, but I wanted you to put the shout-out music in it like you do in Zone 4. Oh, I love okay. that. Okay. Got it. We'll, we'll talk about that at the end of the show. Hey, maybe this will become a trend where we shout somebody out. But no, this is somebody special that I want to shout out. But anyway, we'll save that for the end. So let's start with October solicits for DC and Marvel. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. For 2015. So... Do we want to start in Marvel, or do we want to start with DC? Uh, let's start with Marvel, since you said it first. All right, well, starting off Marvel, we actually have the next event, which is Axis, all its tie-ins, its miniseries. It's bi-weekly miniseries, by the way, and any book that's attached to it. Yeah. Are you going to be getting Axis, Brent? I will try out at least the first issue, because I'm, I'm curious... With all the changes with the Avengers coming up and everything, I'm curious to see, uh, you know, how that all comes to, how this all ties into that. So, yeah, personally, I definitely will be getting um, Axis Carnage and Hobgoblin issue one. Both of them come out this month because uh, I don't, I like Carnage and I like Hobgoblin, mm-hmm. and you never know, this could be connected. <clears throat> I, I'm thinking Spidey, Spider Verse, especially with um, them being main players in. Uh, Spider-Man, you never know. It could connect somehow. Yeah, it could. And, you know, there's Spider-Man villains, so, you know, I'm going to read them. Absolutely. Um, I, as far as access, though, my opinion is we just got through uh, Original Sin. This was a really good event. It should have ended with Original Sin this year. We didn't need to go <clears throat> right from Original Sin into Axis, another event. Yeah. I feel like... Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just okay. I was just gonna say I feel like we got our fill of our 2014 event. Let this year end and then start Axis. Yeah, and I agree with you. Um, you know, we we've talked on various shows how uh, how sick we are of the event to event to event thing that Marvel does. Um, so I, I completely agree with that. Uh, if it wasn't for the fact that I'm actually interested in seeing what happens, I totally, I, I've just kind of learned to accept, even though I hate it, I've learned to accept that they're just going to do this anyway. So, you know, I'll, I'll try it out just for that reason. But man, they're going from a bi-weekly event to a bi-weekly event. You realize that? Yeah. yeah and it's expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very expensive. Three ninety nine books across the board. But well, really quickly. Oh, what? No, uh, issue number one's four ninety nine. So, eh, hey, go figure. It's about all. Look, here we go again. <laughs> but go ahead. But really quickly, I was going to run through <clears throat> all the books that are going to be connected to Axis or be Axis. Mm-hmm. We have Uncanny Avengers twenty five. Yep. We have Avengers and X Men Axis one through three, because it's going to be a bi weekly series, and there's five weeks in. October, I guess, so that's why we get the three. Right. Act one is going to be called Red Supremacy, which the Red Skull will somehow have Onslaught now. So now the Red Skull has Professor Xavier's brain and powers, apparently, mm-hmm. and Onslaught, which was originally Magneto. No, it was Onslaught was a was a projection of Professor Xavier, so that's how he's able to access it. Oh, I thought it was Magneto that Onslaught was. No, Magneto was uh, Zorn. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, somehow Deadpool is going to be connected in all this with Deadpool issue 36. Mm-hmm. Um, Axis is getting another mini series called Axis Revolutions. It's going to be a four issue mini. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Magneto number 11. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Loki, Agent of Asgard, issue number seven. Wow, X Factor's tying in all new X Factor fifteen. I shouldn't be surprised, actually. Yeah. No. Captain America twenty five. No, that doesn't actually tie into it. That's just oh. yeah, that's where it stops right there. Yeah, it stops right there. Captain America twenty five is the new Captain America. Yeah, that's when they announce them. Yeah. So yeah, this this is just other spotlight stuff in this section after after the access stuff. Right. Are you going to be reading uh, Captain America twenty five? Yeah, yeah, because I want to see. The changeover, yeah. I'm not going to, and I'll explain why. It was too predictable. It, it is too predictable. It's just, at the same time, I do like the character of Falcon, and it does make sense that he would take the mantle up. So I, I kind of want to, I don't know, I kind of want to check it out, see if it's still, see if it's a good series with him as the lead. Uh, when it starts with, uh, of course, they're relaunching a new uh, new title with him the very next month. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll wait to see what you think, and then I'll go from there. But right now, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna buy it when it initially comes out. Gotcha. So we'll see about that. And here's another problem I have: mm-hmm. the next event, or not event event, but it's a mini event, the mm-hmm. death of Wolverine. Yeah, the Logan Legacy. So this yeah. is, this is after the Death of Wolverine mini series, and this is what goes on after it. Right, it's like the aftermath. Right, I'm I'm not interested in his death, and I'm not interested in the aftermath either, personally. Where am I? I because yeah, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You go, you go. I was just gonna say I like some of the characters in it, and I'm you know we haven't seen Dokken for a long time, but at the same time, eh, that's just I I can't do it. So go ahead. I was gonna say it's not worth it. It's a three ninety nine series, and it's not just one issue. It's three issues. It's, again, another bi-weekly series, and there's seven parts. Yeah. So either you get Axis or you get Wolverine. Yeah. Or you get both and you lose a lot of money. Yeah. And then it's got, it's got tie-ins, too. But, yeah. Yeah. Nightcrawler. Yeah, there's more. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Nightcrawler and uh, the Deadpool and Captain America one-shot. So. Yeah. Nightcrawler number seven, to be specific. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, I can't. I, I, I can't. I know Michael's going to get the Death of Wolverine, the, the $5 books mm-hmm. that are coming out in um, September so far. I don't yeah. know if that's true or not anymore. But, Matt, I, I think at this point, knowing what's coming after the death especially, <clears throat> this is this would definitely... Um, get me not to buy The Death of Wolverine, knowing that there's going to be a seven-part miniseries after it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, I'm, in in its defense, I will say this. If you are a Wolverine fan, and that's like the main titles you buy and you don't mess with other titles, that's really good for just Wolverine fans. The problem comes to fans like us that like to buy a variety of, of books and a variety of characters, and we like to you know try to get as much of the overall stuff that we can if we enjoy it, obviously. But, you know, we both kind of like Wolverine, and we'd like to see what's going on, but it's just too much. Way too much. I can't... You gotta... I mean, if you take a calculator and you add up, let's pretend that you want to read every single thing Marvel, just Marvel. <laughs> you're, just, you're spending a lot of money per month. <laughs> you're going broke unless you filthy rich. <laughs> exactly. That or you work at Marvel and you get the books for free because there's no way... Yeah. No way. And I don't um, support... I know somebody asked us on the live show, and we never answered it, um, our well, we, stance on pirating. We did answer it. We talked about it in in length, actually. We did, but not on that show. We talked about it in another show. Oh, maybe. But I'm against pirating, so for those of you that are going to say, well, people do tour it, the whole you know Marvel rundown each week. Yes, you can tour it. It's very simple, actually. Will I do it, though? Never. No. Because it does, because that is a sale loss for the comic, and that's what pushes comics to close out quicker. You have to support the comic by paying for it, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we have comic books today. Yeah. If you don't support it, you can't pay. they can't pay the artists and writers. They can't pay the artists and writers. There is no more book. So, that's just my stands on it. 
So pay Brant lots of money. <laughs> um, we have two number ones. We have Bucky Barnes, Winter Soldier number one, and Deathlock number one. I think I'm going to get Bucky Barnes. What about you, Brant? Um, I don't know. the. I'm not familiar with the writer. The artist, though, I will tell you before you say, yes, I'm going to get it. That is the artist that did that awful uh, Spider-Man miniseries that we all hated. Which one? For which one? For the the, the one that the, the the fan base trashed cat over. You know, I'm saying which artist? The one for Bucky Barnes. Yeah, the one for Bucky Barnes, Marco Rudy. Uh, uh oh. Yeah, I can't. What's the name of that series? What was it? Alpha. No, no, the no the. Uh... Oh, uh, Marvel Knight Spider Man. Was that what it was? Yeah, yeah, the that. One where everybody attacked her for it. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that's Marvel Knight Spider Man. That's that artist. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so moving on, are you getting Deathlock? Uh, first issue, yes, because I like Nathan Edmondson's Punisher and uh, Black Widow series. So I, I want to see what he does with the character. I'm not a really a Deathlock fan, but I, I want to see how he handles it because he he made me a Punisher fan. So. Gotcha. What about Thanos, a god up there listening, issues one through four? It's going to be the whole month. No, probably not. I'm not either. That's another weekly. So that's three weeklies already. Well, well two bi weeklies and one weekly. Yeah. And I feel like this book is an answer to Justice League 3000, Guardians 3000, number one. It is, but at the same time, for me, I'm definitely getting this because it's the original Guardians of the Galaxy team. And it's written by Dan Abnett, who, him and Andy Lanning both, you know, they did the uh, whole uh, Annihilation stuff, the cosmic stuff that I absolutely loved. So, I'm definitely getting this. I'll give it a shot. This I'll give a shot. Since I'm not getting Bucky, I'll probably get this. Yeah. Uh, now we're going into the Avenger books, which... Ready for this? Are you ready for this, ladies and gentlemen? These books are leading into an event that's going <laughs> to happen in seven months. All time runs out. Yeah. So we're gonna go from original sin to Axis. Now we're gonna end up in Time Runs Out. Yep. And Avengers 25, and uh, New Avengers 25. I'm sorry. Right. And Avengers 36 will be seven months and, in the future. And 37, 36, and 37. Oh, I'm sorry. And yes, you're right. I didn't see that underneath. All of them will be seven months in the future, and the rest of the Marvel Universe has to catch up. Yep. Oh, joy. Yeah. Oh, rapture. And I, I believe that started, or it starts in September because it's in eight months. Yes, it does. Yeah, and and both it, Avenger books are five dollars each. Yep. At least these are only it. four, but yeah, still. <laughs> not buying it. I'm not. I'm done. No. Once, yeah. once original sin is done in Avengers. I'm dropping the book again. Yeah, Hick Hickman is just, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, I'm done with Hickman Avengers. Yeah. And then, of course, there's uh, Avengers World, number 14, written by Nick Spencer. I know Michael will be reading it. I will be, too. I, this, is the, this is the good Avengers series, in my opinion. This is the good and, one. So. And it also involves the next Avengers, so I'm actually excited for it, too. Yeah. Uh, we're moving into now, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Spider no, sorry. <laughs> and now Spider-Verse is in full effect. We got Amazing Spider-Man 7 and 8, which are considered the edge of the Spider-Verse. Mm -hmm. We have Edge of the Spider-Verse 4 and 5, which concludes the miniseries. Right. Um, Superior Foes is... Oh, well, this isn't connected to it. Why do they do that? <laughs> is it connected to it? No, that's it. So that's it. Actually connected to Spider Verse, I'll be getting all of that. Oh yeah, I'll absolutely be getting it all. No doubt, I'll, I'll be getting all of these Spider Man titles. Period. <laughs> but that's beside the point. There you go. Yeah, Superior Foes. I love the solicitation. Still not, still not canceled. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Spider Man twenty nine nine. The first issue was actually really good. I liked it. Which cover do you like here, though? I like oh, it's this. from five. I'm sorry, never mind. Yeah, they're both I, the same. I, yeah, I like the cover to, to five. I think it's five, which is the one on the right, the shattered image. Yes, I love yes. that cover. Yeah. 
So are you looking forward to um, more Loon? Because I see that this is connected. This has to be connected to Spider Verse a little bit. Oh yeah, it is. Uh, Spider Man twenty nine nine at, at the issue five. It says we'll take you to the edge of Spider Verse. Okay, so it, it will be connecting just by issue five. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So. And my question to you is: Are you happy it's going to be by? It's going to be twice a month now because obviously it's going to be like that. I'm never happy about twice a month. I don't think this. I, I understand for Spider Verse, they're probably going to do that a lot, but I, I don't. Even Spider Man, even Amazing Spider Man, I'm not crazy just because of the you know the cost factor. But you know, it's always good to it get your favorite be, book twice a month. I know Spider Man used to be three three times a month. Yeah. No, no, no. It used to be two ninety nine. Also, when it was three times a month, it was two ninety nine. True. Very true. So that was a little bit better. Yeah. So do you want to take over for now a little bit now so I can rest the voice? Sure. We're moving into the other uh, main Marvel books. we got Rocket Raccoon number four and Legendary Star-Lord number four. Um, Rocket Raccoon, it's Scotty Young, <laughs> so I'm going to be getting that, definitely. Uh, Legendary Star-Lord, I'm going to – got to read that first issue to see if I'm still going to be reading that. I don't know. I, I like I like Star Lord and uh, Rocket cool. Raccoon was really cute. I love the issue. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's it's Cosmic Marvel. I love Cosmic Marvel. Uh, staying in that same realm, we got Guardians of the Galaxy number twenty, the final chapter of what really happened in the Cancerverse. I'm assuming this is how Nova comes back or something. Um, you know the uh, Richard Ryder Nova. Yeah. Because we know he's coming back, so I, this that's what this is all leading to uh, with the Cancerverse stuff. So I'm, I'm curious about that. So what will happen to Sam Alexander then is what I'm wondering. I think he'll still be Nova. I think, uh, if anything, Richard Ryder will either join the Guardians or maybe he'll pop up uh, in the Nova book as well. I don't know. Well, that would be interesting. Who knows? He could even become the new Supernova or something. That's a possibility, yeah. yeah. So we'll just have to wait and see. I'm just excited to get him back because, you know, I'm a Richard Ryder fan. I like him. I, I love the new book, or, you know, most of the new book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, I, yeah, it's Richard Ryder was New Warriors, you know, so I, I like it. I've got an affinity for the character. Uh, we got the Marvel 75th anniversary celebration. Don't even get me started on the numbering there. Uh, <laughs> we talked about that before. It's yeah. Not technically, their 75th anniversary or whatever. Um, lots of great artists involved in this book. Bruce Timm. I'll be even. getting it. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be getting it. I'm sorry, that's, that's uh, I believe, an Alex Ross cover, by the way, so yeah, I'll be getting it. Yeah, there's, yeah. You oh no, it. Paulo it's, Rivera. Sorry. Yeah. But still, I mean, Bruce Timm is writing and drawing in this book. That's pretty cool. Tom DeFalco, James Robinson, Stan Lee. It's, it's going to be a, you know, I, I think it's going to be a really good book, so. We'll see. Yes, absolutely. We got Moon Knight number eight. Eh. Skip. <laughs> Hawkeye versus Deadpool starts off in October. Skip. <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, I'm done with anything Deadpool versus. Okay. <laughs> Hulk number seven. Are you reading that? Nope. I I don't know if I am or not because I'm so behind right now. I've missed the first few issues. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel bad. I I like Hulk though, and I like uh, Mark Bagley's art. So yeah, we'll see. I love Mark Bagley's art. Yeah. Electra, you reading that? I'm not. No, I'm not. Okay. Inhuman number seven. Really? Okay, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, it, it comes out right. Yeah, because number three is supposed to come out in a couple of weeks, I think. And this is October. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, we'll see. Interesting cover though with Black Bolt. Hanging from the chains there. I, I just, I don't know what that means, but we'll see. Hmm. Okay, Miss Marvel, I know you're not reading the series. No, but I hear good things about it. This is a fantastic series. I am reading this series. Everybody should read this series. It's fun. It's uh, youthful. It's, you know, unique. So check it out. I will be getting it. Punisher 11, I'll be getting that too. I know Michael will. Right? Yep. Oh, I, you're not best. <laughs> oh shoot! It's a good series too. Uh, it's been solid. It, like I said, he made me a Punisher fan with that series. Uh, we spoke of Nova earlier. We got Nova Twenty Two. It's Halloween. And Nova goes to Westchester to join the students of the Jean Grey School for trick or treating. 
Yeah, this is one of those issues that you're going to want to... Normally, yeah, I would I would agree, but it's Nova with the kids from the school and Visa Chef. It's, that sounds fun to me. I don't know, and the cover is hilarious. Well, it is Halloween, so I would think this would be kind of like Marvel's Halloween special, because they're not doing one this year. Yeah, I just wish for this kind of issue it was only two ninety nine. That's my complaint, because it's three ninety nine. If it was a two ninety, I I just think throwaway fill in issues like this should be lower price. That's me though. I don't know how you feel about that. Nah. Okay. Hawkeye <laughs> number twenty two. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Nineteen just came out. Okay. After right. how many months? Uh, too right. many. Black Widow. I'm behind on. I think you dropped this, didn't you? Yeah, but Mike's getting it for the time. Is it? Yeah, it's Black Widow for the time with um, Punisher. Yeah, and the problem with this issue, though, is it's tying into the Death Wolverine, so I don't know if I want that issue. Uh, Daredevil 9, that's one we both enjoy. So, oh, yes. Yeah. Love it. No question about that. Getting Daredevil 9. Uh, we'll skip the next one. Next two, right? Yeah, because those are Michael's All New Invaders and Thunderbolts. Yeah. Fantastic Four, 11 and 12, by weekly. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them's been Grim Prisoner, continuing that whole thing, and uh, Spider-Man shows up in the next issue. I don't know how I feel about Fantastic Four being twice a month. I'm not too comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. I don't like that Marvel's testing the waters again for doubling up more than two books mm-hmm. a month. I agree. So, and Fantastic Four, while it's been real, it's been good. Mm-hmm. It's not spectacular. Yeah, it's it's kind of fallen off a little bit. Uh, it's still solid, but it's uh, solid, but it's not. It doesn't feel like the Fantastic Four because of what just happened with Original Sin. Yeah. So, so I don't know if it's by this time. I don't know if I'll be reading it still because I don't think it's going to be worth the um. Twice, twice a month. Yeah, I don't think yeah. it will be. I don't know. Are you reading Secret Avengers? I'm not. No, oh, I'm not either. Okay. Skip that one. New Warriors. Uh, okay. I'm trying to st- I'm trying to hold tight to this. Yeah, I <laughs> this has been a rough series. I got to I got to admit it. it's been rough for me. So. Yeah, it it's been rough. It definitely has been, but it's Scarlet Spider in it. I have to. I know, and I'm I'm the same way. I mean, it's a New Warriors book. Plus, it's got Scarlet Spider in it. It's it's hard for me, but it's uh, Christopher Yost. On his own, I don't think he does as well when he's co-writing with Craig Kyle, and it shows. <laughs> yeah. Also, um, for anybody who read Scarlet Spider and wanted to know more about um, Ar- uh what was the name? Um, Arsley. Hummingbird. Arsley. I was right. Um, it's apparent that it's going to continue in this book. So. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. Yeah. They're. They. It, they Kane and Arsley picked up basically right where they left off. So. Right. So I'm. that's another reason why I'm holding on to it. Yeah. Uh, Captain Marvel, I've read the first issue and liked it, but I haven't read any since, so I don't know. It's good. I'm loving okay. it. I'll okay. be getting this issue. Good. I'm glad to hear it's still good. Kelly Sue DeConnick is awesome on the book. Yeah. Yeah, she, she talks about this character. I, I was watching an interview with her from Comic-Con, uh, and she was talking about her work on the book and her passion for the character and for the work uh, really shines through. So that always helps. Uh, She-Hulk, I don't care. Neither do I. Ghost Rider, I don't care. Neither do I. Savage Hulk, I don't care. Neither do I. Okay. I, oh, I, I did want to mention something about Savage Hulk, though. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but the writing team on Savage Hulk is the writing team that is doing Star Wars Legacy. For Dark Horse. No, I did not know that. Yeah, it's Karina Becko and Gabriel Hardman. Still don't care about Hulk. I don't either, but I think it's cool because we were talking about that when we when we were talking about Marvel getting the license to Star Wars. We were talking about what's going to happen to all those creators doing those books, and it's cool to me that they actually did carry some of them over and put them. Yeah, all and uh, Brian Wood is doing something for Marvel, I believe. He's still writing uh, X Men. There you go. So. They have all the the Star Wars writers now. Let's see if they bring them into Star Wars or if they keep them on different books. Yeah. Either way, I, I think that's a cool move on their part to to bring them over. So, kudos to Marvel for doing something good. 
<laughs> Finally. <laughs> I wouldn't go say that. <laughs> Miracle Man, neither one of us care about. Nope. Miles Morales, the ultimate Spider Man. Moving into that, the I care universe. about. Yeah, definitely care about that. That's been a really good series so far. Um, I have faith that it'll still be. So, we'll be checking it, that out. Yeah. I, I absolutely agree. Mm-hmm. All new Ultimates. Opposite feeling. <laughs> yeah, so, that one's a nippy. All right. Heading into the all ages stuff. I don't think we're reading the nope. first two. Are you reading Pigment at all? I haven't. Oh, I but, should be though, because I hear it's selling out. Yeah. Oh well. Stephen Little. King. Yeah, I don't think we need to care about. I know you read uh, Empire of the Dead though. Heck yeah! I can't wait for Act Two. Cool. So that's what this is. Act Two, number two, starts in September, obviously. Yep. So you want to pick up with X Men? Okay. All new X Men 33. The all new X Men are in the Ultimate Universe. Nice cover. Looking mm-hmm. forward to it. I am too. Um, Uncanny X Men 27. I don't know if I'm going to drop it again. I'm not a fan of Chris Bocelletto, uh, Bocello's artwork. I really am not. I like his artwork uh, far better than the person has done the, the past issue or two. Um, I like the past issue or two. I, we see. Uh, we, see, we differ on that. I don't. But uh, this is a book, and it's weird for me because I'm usually, I'm usually like I read all of a book or I don't read any of it. But this is a book that I just pick up issues that look interesting to me. Mm. I don't know why that is. It just turns out that way. So. I just don't even reading the synopsis of the book. It's like, eh. Yeah, it's, it's kind, of, kind of yeah, kind of flat. Yeah, even Cyclops number six. I don't think either of us read that. I I just haven't tried it yet. I don't. No, I I take that back. I did read the first issue and it was actually pretty good. Greg Rucka is a is a good writer, so Mike I'm liked, maybe reading it. Yeah. Mike liked it, but he he didn't want to keep going. Gotcha. Yeah. I don't know. I I want to give it another issue because, like I said, I'm I'm behind on stuff. So I'll see if it still holds my interest. Yeah. Uh, X Force. I know neither of us <laughs> read. Wolverine and the X Men, uh, another book that's sort of without tying in, it is tying into the death of Wolverine. Mm-hmm. This is his last will and testament, just like mm-hmm. what happened to mm-hmm. Xavier, so forget that. Glad yeah. I dropped that book. Deadpool, Art of War. Uh, no. Yep, same no. here. X Men, oh, which is Brian, not by Brian Wood. Yeah, he's, I guess Guggenheim's taken over. And I'm still not caring. Amazing X Men. <laughs> wait, well, wait, wait a second. I have been reading that series. Actually. Okay, good. So go for it. Uh, but I am behind again, as always. <laughs> but um, I'm really, honestly, I keep saying that I am trying to catch up, people. Every week I am picking certain titles and I'm trying to catch up on. Yeah, but, Brent is really working hard. Eventually, he's going to catch up completely. I would say by the end of this month. Let's hope. <laughs> uh, I'm hopeful. Yeah. But I, this. I don't know. I, I'll probably try the first issue Guggenheim does and see if it's see if it's interesting to me. And then uh, there you go. Yeah. Amazing X Men. I don't think either one of us cares about anymore. Yeah, I kind of dropped off after the uh, Nightcrawler arc. Actually, I think everybody who's anybody did. And Storm number four. I don't think I care at all. I heard issue number one was really good, but I haven't read it. But again, this is a Death of Wolverine aftermath, so I don't care. There you go. <laughs> uh, anything from Icon you want to touch on? The uh, Jason Aaron doing a doing a creator own title, Men of Wrath. That's kind of interesting to me, just because mm-hmm. it's Jason Aaron. You know who's doing Original Sin? Who's well? Okay, he's done Thor, but he's he did Wolverine and the X Men, the first volume. He's doing Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah, so I'm kind of curious about that. I have to look more into that series, but other than that, no. Gotcha. And then we go into the collections. I love how Marvel, since Star Wars is going to start up in January, they're throwing out a book already yeah. of their failed Star Wars attempt. Exactly. Oh. It's like, hey, look at our failure. So when we start up the new series and we're good, when we're bad, you can look back and see worse. Yeah, and it, it contains 45 issues if you include the annual. Okay. I'm going to pay $125 for that. Right. Uh, I don't think there's really anything else book-wise. I'm just running. Uh, the original Sin hardcover comes up then, too. 
Oh, okay, that's yeah, that's something. I just saw it. Yeah. Other than that, no, not really. Yeah. So that's it for Marvel. So let's um, move over to DC. Okay. We and uh, this is the month where World's End is beginning. Yep. Earth Two World's End one through four. Indeed. I'm excited for that. I haven't been reading Earth Two, so I and I'm kind of skeptical on weeklies at this point. So I don't know if I'm excited or not. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, you know Power Girl and Huntress are back on Earth 2 right now, right? Uh, yeah, I've heard this and that, yeah. Yeah, so they're back on Earth 2. Uh, with Earth 2 issue, the issue that's coming out next week, which we'll talk about in the rundown, uh, that's actually when Power Girl is showing back up. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Uh, then, of course, we have Earth 2 number 27, mm-hmm. which... I, I really don't care for the 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 theme of this month's covers. The variant covers is um, Halloween. Yeah, I'm sticking with the regular cover there. Yeah, for that one. Uh, what about Multiversity? The Just Number One. You know, it's Grant Morrison, so typically my my gut reaction is I'm not touching that with the ten foot pole. But I was the the stuff that came out in the panel about the multiversity stuff actually intrigued me. So now I'm kind of on the fence about it all. So gotcha. yeah, it's, I don't know if you, if you read that panel or heard that panel. No, but, but the reason I'm interested in this book is Chris Kent. Yeah. Uh, it's the got, surface of that name scares me. Yeah. But I mean, it's got some interesting stuff that he's with. I mean, you, you did see the, the map, the multiversity, the multiverse yes. map. So that was the whole thing I mean, that's involved with it. it. He's like detailed all of these different planets. I think there's a certain number of them, like eight or something, that are undefined that DC can go in and define at any time they want. But he's defined all the rest of the 52 worlds. And that level of detail and, and stuff and using all these characters, uh, it's just it's kind of intriguing. So now I kind of want to check it out. Me too. Well, I, I wanted to check it out before, but um, the map just solidified my wanting to... I, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, it's just Morrison's name just kind of gives me... You know? <laughs> oh, of course. I, I concur, but... I don't know. And like I said, Chris Kent. Yeah. And Brett Morrison knows I make fun of him. Now I've got to make sure he didn't screw around with Chris Kent. Right. Are you getting Arkham Manor yep. or Gotham Academy? Uh <sighs> No. <laughs> I think I'm going to get Gotham Academy for the name Dan Jurgens, and also it's more interesting than Arkham. I it's Brian Azzarello, Jeff Lemire, and Keith Giffen, too, though. And I just, that, no. <laughs> it's just that, no, I can't do it. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't I don't like Wayne Manor becoming Arkham Manor. Right. Uh, I agree. First of all, too close to the Batcave. Yep, yep. Second of all, where is Bruce going to be? Well, that's they talked about that at uh, at San Diego too. It's like now that it's there, he has to kind of infiltrate and, and keep them away from the Batcave and all this stuff. And it just sounds stupid to me. I don't like it. Yeah, it's dumb. I'm yeah. sorry, but I do like Gotham Academy a little bit just because it'll spotlight some of the characters that I like, like Tim Drake and. Um, Maybe Harp and a few others. I'll wait and hear what you guys think about it. I just uh, it's two ninety nine, so I'm giving it a shot. What about Deathstroke number one? I'm giving that a shot because of Tony S. Daniel. Yeah, for for Tony S. Daniel, and because I think they're taking cues from uh, Arrow a little bit and rethinking their New Fifty Two approach to the character a bit. So it, he looks awesome in that cover. Yes. So yeah, definitely on that one. I'm just sad to see Tony S. Daniel leave with. Um, Superman, Wonder Woman, but that series is going to end eventually anyway, so. Clarion, I don't have a care in the world for. No. no. Lobo, same thing. Yep. Uh, Trinity of Sin, I know we won't be reading it, but Michael will. Yep. Same thing with Green Arrow, unless you read Green Arrow. Uh, This is when the new team takes over, right? The new creative team? Yeah. Yeah. I will probably try this issue because Andrew Kreisberg works on the TV show. So I'm 
yeah, I kind of want to see what he does with it. Okay. What about New Suicide Squad? I see the Joker's daughter, which means death. Yeah, no, probably not. Okay. Teen Titans, by this <laughs> nope. point, uh, yeah, by this point, I'll know if I'm going to be reading it still or not. I read the first issue, and it was just like the last series uh, before they relaunched it. And yeah, no. It looks like a bunch of one shots because even the solicit here says a free night out for Raven leads to Titan uh, leads the Titans into another battle. It's like really. Yeah, none of ones kind of thing. You know. Uh, uh, dropping Teen Titans. Yeah. New Fifty Two number twenty two through twenty six. I'll be getting those. What about you? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna see the weekly story. I just have to at this point. I like in 26, the uh, Batman five years later appears for the first time in Future's End. Yeah, and he reveals the truth that will unravel Firestorm's world. So. I'm looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about Justice League number 34? Jeff Johns, Justice League, I'm there. Same here. What about Ju- uh, oh Justice League 35? Wow, it's doubling up Justice League this month. Yeah, it's because they're behind an issue. Again. Yeah, and guess what? Both books are five dollars. Oh, oops, sorry. Nope, they're three ninety nine. Relax, everybody. Yeah, it was the combo, combo pack, packs yeah. are five dollars. As far as the uh, on thirty five, we had the Halloween cover. I kind, I think I like the regular cover better, but I do kind of like the, the Halloween cover for that one. Yeah. What about uh, Justice League United Annual? I don't read Justice League United. Me either. So. Okay, so then we'll skip that and Justice League United uh, number five. Justice League Dark, Annual Number 2, and Issue 35. I know neither of us read that, so we're skipping that, yes? Yeah, correct. Yes. And dear Lord, thank you, the final issue of Ryan Azarello's <laughs> Wonder Woman. So I guess I'll be picking up Wonder Woman 36. Yes, same here. By the Finches, yes. And then Secret Origins is going to be touching on Wonder Woman and Dead Man. I won't be getting that. No. Justice League 3000 number 10. I'm surprised the series isn't over yet. Never read an uh, issue of it. Neither. I read the first and I hated it. Yeah. Star Spangled War Stories. Aquaman and the others. Aquaman. Constantine. I'm surprised you're not reading Aquaman and the others. It's Dan Jurgens. Um, there are some things that uh, Dan <laughs> Jurgens can't fix and that's Aquaman. Yeah. So Flash. The Flash. <laughs> there you go. I'll be reading that. Absolutely. And I do like the Halloween cover for that. I do too. Yeah. What about Superman number 35? I love the Halloween cover. Really? That's one of the ones I hated. I like the regular. Well, I, can't, well, <laughs> I don't know if I really like either the cover. But I'll definitely be reading it. Then again, I don't. looking at it up close, I really don't like the Halloween cover much. Spook. I don't know what I'm getting. Mm-hmm. I like we'll the see. Action Comics Halloween cover better. Yes, Action Comics 35. I love the like zombie Superman. Yeah, that's a, that's a Neil Adams cover. That's why I like it. Also, I like yeah. Neil Adams art. Yeah. I'm guessing you're not going to be reading anything Superman except Superman number. Um, I read Superman Wonder Woman. Which is next, and that's Superman Wonder yeah. Woman 12. Yeah. This and is where a new, te- it's new team is taking over, Charles Soule and Jack Herbert. Yeah. And for, for going back to Action Comics real quick, I made just for that cover. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Go ahead. World's Finest? I, yeah, I've never read it. I might get it just to see the uh, trip through history. Mm. Cool. Supergirl, I don't know if I'll be reading it at this point. Same here. Uh, Batman Eternal 26 through 30. Yeah, absolutely. So. I'm saying here. Batman 35, Endgame begins, and it's only going to be six issues, thank you, Lord. Half a year only. Yeah, that's just like a regular arc, so I, that, I can live with that. Me too. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to having Scott Snyder back on Batman by this point. Yeah, I think I like the regular cover for that, though. Me too. I'm not too much of a fan of the Halloween. Yeah. Grayson, number three, I'll be reading that. Mm-hmm. Same here. Batman Superman 15, if it is Jay Lee, I will not yeah, be nope. reading it. <laughs> not touching it. 
I'm sorry, but Jay Lee's art does not belong in a Superman book, and I feel like DC knows it, and that's why they keep pushing him off arcs, like pushing him further forward. Mm. But at this point, just take him off the book. I mean, yeah. I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, I guess I won't get issued number 15 after all. Yeah. Uh, Detective Comics 35, I don't think either of us read that. No. Batman and Robin? Um, this is part of the Robin Rises. I might. I might read this. It's really good. Yeah. Batgirl, I think at this point I'm going to be dropping Batgirl because, first of all, um, this issue starts a new uh, team. Mm-hmm. And Gail Simone is the only one that can write Batgirl, so yeah, yeah I'm probably dropping it's, it. It's also the it's not just the new team; it's the new outfit, the new take on the character. I mean, it's completely different. So I, and it's horrible. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the concept at all. So, so that's it for Batgirl for me this month. We don't read Red Hood and the Outlaws, nor Batwoman, nor Catwoman. I do read Red Hood, but I'm just very, very far behind. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, but it's... I don't know if Will Pfeiffer's been reading, writing it this whole time, so... He by, is. Okay. I don't know. I'm way behind on that, so I can't really say. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, what about Harley Quinn? I still read that. I'll be reading that. Okay, what about the annual? Uh, probably. What about New Gods, uh, Godhead? I'm going to, yeah, that's kicking off the Green Lantern thing. I'm going to be reading that. I guess. <laughs> Not like I have a because. choice to send Green Lantern 35, Green Lantern Core 35, Green Lantern New Guardians 35, Red Lantern 35, Sinestro 6. Yep. They'll all, all connect yeah, to that. They'll all connect to that for the next three months after this. So. It's, it's at least a three month thing because it's three acts. At least. I can't, yeah. I can't deal with that. That's so stupid. It's it's the new gods of apocalypse though, right? Or like it's the new gods, like classic new gods only. Yeah, universe. but I don't want to buy, I don't want to buy new guardians. Oh yeah, I don't either. I really don't. I don't. But I, I want to read this event, so I'll be getting there. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Infinity Man. I know we don't read. Swamp Thing Annual, nobody cares. Same thing with Swamp Thing 35. Do you want to take over with the digital books? Uh, yeah, um, going back to Swamp Thing real quick, though. I I like the Rot World stuff, but I haven't read it since that, so I don't know if I like it or not. So. Gotcha. All right, heading into the digital. The Flash, Season 0, Number 1, based on, of course, the TV show. Uh, it's getting its digital series, like every... DC show does typically so there we go that's going to be cool I'm interested in that uh, again it, written by Andrew Kreisberg who works on both uh, Arrow and Flash so. mm-hmm. Arrow also comes back with the season 2.5 I have not read the previous Arrow comics so neither have I yeah so I don't know about that one. Uh, Batman 66 meets Green Hornet 5 of 6 I haven't been reading that me either Infinite Crisis Fight for the Multiverse I have read the first issue. It's really good. Okay. I haven't gotten a chance to read it yet. Uh, Batman Beyond Universe number 15. I know you read Love that. it. Yeah. So, cool on that. Batman 66, number 16? Nope. Okay. I've heard really good things about that series. I just haven't... It's spectacular. It's yeah. really spectacular. I'm just not a big, humongous fan of it. Gotcha. Injustice, Gods Among Us, year two, annual number one. Um, uh, uh. I'll check it out. I like the series still. And Injustice Gods Among Us, year three, number one and two. So it's still uh, two issues a month. But issue two says final issue, so I don't care. <laughs> but that must be a typo. <laughs> it's got to be a typo. Has to be. Oh, my bad. <laughs> um, Smallville season 11, Chaos number three or four. You skipped T-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Oh, you're, you're right. Yeah. So... There you go. But uh, Smallville, you're still reading those? Yes. Okay. One of these days, I'll go back and read all that Smallville stuff. And Sensation Comics featuring Wonder Woman, number yes. three. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, heading into the uh, collections. Uh, Futures in five years later, Omnibus comes out. 
If you're crazy enough to wait and spend a hundred dollars. Right. Um, we got a one dollar Batman Essential book, Batman Black Mirror Special Edition. Let's see if there's anything else of interest. Oh, I, I in the solicits this week, we'll be the rundown. We'll be talking about the first one. Okay. Which I got. Cool. And uh, Superman and Chain Deluxe Edition hardcover. Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay. I'm just glad I got through the the solo issue series. This is something I'm kind of interested in. If I, yeah, it's a Identity Crisis 10th Anniversary Edition hardcover. That looks good. Yeah, that's a fantastic uh, miniseries. I recommend to anybody. And one more, Superman for All Seasons Deluxe Deluxe Edition hardcover. I really want to get that because I'm missing one book, I believe, from All Season. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Kid book wise, I think we're gonna skip because neither of us read any of the kid books. Vertigo, do you read any of the books from Vertigo? I read uh, the ones listed here. Um, blah, 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 da, 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 I'm going through them. The Unwritten Volume Two Apocalypse. It's up to ten issues. I only read the first two issues so far, but uh, this is the first chapter of the final un- unwritten story. So. Um, I'll be checking that out. But aside from that, not really. One thing I want to mention that's underneath the comics in the collectibles Mm -hmm. is the Man of Steel Superman by Gary Frank. Gary Frank draws Superman like Christopher Reeve. If you look, if you zoom in on that picture, Brant, and in the show notes on zone4podcast.com, please share this picture. That is an awesome Superman cool awesome and I will also mention real quick because I actually love the way these figures are made or at least the Ocean Master and uh, Black Manta from the Throne of Atlantis that yeah those look really cool yeah I really like those and it's nice to see a Deathstroke bust but not something that really interests me and then there's some zero year Batman figures yeah Mm. we got some scribble knots we got Joker and Harley Quinn statue, which you can hear us talk about on Hall of Toys. Yep. And uh, Arrow, Oliver Queen, and uh, Black Canary. Uh, just to note, uh, a lot of the stuff comes out in uh, in January as far as the, the statues and toys. Like this, uh, the Gary Frank Man of Steel, it says on sale January 2015. Yeah, and some of them are February as well. So they, yeah. they do a lot of advanced solicit. For the, for the toys and figures and stuff. But I love this Gary Frank um, Superman. I wish I could get it now. I, I, or at least pre-order it now. Yeah. Looks really good. Alright. So that wraps up DC. Yep. I, I wanted to mention two things out of IDW's. Project. Yeah, and I agree with you on them, so go for it. Okay. First thing, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Ghostbusters, issue one of four... Uh, miniseries crossing them over. We're both really excited about this one. Absolutely. Yeah, the, I know you read the Turtles series. I'm a Turtles fan, uh, even though I haven't read the series. And Ghostbusters, you know, we did media madness on Ghostbusters for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we're big fans of uh, both of these franchises. And crossing them over is just interesting. It should be a lot of fun. And also, um. Hopefully, maybe we'll get a spinoff of the Ghostbusters again after the miniseries. That would be cool. That would be cool. This, you know, this is both of their uh, 30th anniversaries this year. Yep. So obviously, I mean, this is a cool way to end out the year because it starts in October, so it's going to end in January. So that's a really cool way to to cap off their anniversaries. Especially with the horrible turtle movie that's about to hit <laughs> theaters very soon. Uh. Anyway, um, and I wanted to mention this for all our. Uh, Younger listeners, if you're out there, Skylanders, number one of five, a new miniseries, uh, written by Ron Mars, of all people. So That's, that's going to be fun. Yeah, I think it is. I know Cindy's going to like that. What about the, uh, oh, no, never mind. That's not in the solicits this month. I'm, oh. thinking of some, I'm thinking way ahead of myself. Okay. There's Edward Scissorhands. So that starts up this month. Not a real particular fan. I'm not going to buy the book, but uh, you know I did watch the movie. It's interesting that they're doing. Does Cindy like the movie also? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about some of the other stuff when we get to the San Diego stuff. Yeah. So, that's that's what I was going to say, but I was like, oh wait, that's not this month. Yeah. 
that's that's all uh, out of there. I saw. I did want to mention uh, also for um, Valiant, real quick. Uh, October is a big month for uh, Valiant. Uh, they've got the return of Quantum and Woody, a new five issue miniseries. They're doing Armor Hunters Aftermath. Uh, they're doing uh, both Exo Man of War and Unity get zero issues, and uh, Ar- Archer and Armstrong. Uh, gets a 25th uh, anniversary hullabaloo is what they call it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really cool. A lot of stuff going on for Valiant. And Archer and Armstrong, they, it's been an option for film. I don't know if you uh, caught wind of that. No, I didn't catch wind of that. Yeah. So, good stuff for Valiant. Okay, so do we want to go into San Diego now? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so here is where Brent and I are going to basically, uh, like I said, on Zone 4, this is going to be a little bit of a um, teaser. Zone 4, we're going to be going in-depth with a lot of stuff, um, San Diego Comic-Con-wise. So here, uh, Brent and I are just going to give our general um, thoughts on the convention. You know, we'll spotlight a couple of things that caught our eye, uh, but... um, Brent, you want to start off with how you felt about the convention this year? Yeah, um, and f- for all of uh, Comic Frontline's responses, you can go back and watch our live show, our live yep. Q&A from this past Tuesday. Um, we all kind of talked about, uh, well, we all we talked about was San Diego, except for a couple of books, which we're actually going to talk about those here, too. So, <laughs> but, excuse me, I had to take a drink. No, <clears throat> no overall, I... I think it was a good convention. There was some cool stuff coming out of it, um, but I was left without that wow factor that I wanted. I wanted to hear one or two huge announcements that just kind of blew me away. And unfortunately, I personally didn't get that. I know some other people got that with different things. Uh, for me personally, I didn't get that. But I did get a lot of cool stuff that I was interested in, mostly like Spider-Man stuff and you know, uh, you know, a couple of movie things here and there. Uh, you know. Mostly Marvel stuff, uh, comic-wise, though, for me. Yeah, I personally was let down this year. Yeah. Last year, there was so much news. I remember there was emails on top of emails with tons of really... A lot of good things. And then DC and Marvel, they really got me... Um, oh, what was the word I'm looking for? Um, pumped. They, they gave us some really big announcements. And, you know, you got really excited. And there were some surprises in there. This year, I just don't feel that i feel like dc did a really good job with the tv stuff like arrow and constantine and flash Mm -hmm. they did a great job marvel did a good panel with their comic books you know talking about what's coming out um the spider woman series stuff like that but i i just don't feel like anything was a super spectacular surprise like i wasn't wowed that's the word yeah. I wasn't wowed this year. I mean, we either got um, stuff that we already knew about, an expansion on that, or we um, we got stuff that was like, oh, okay, that's nice to add on, or that's a nice little trailer or whatever, but that's really all. Yeah, I mean, as far as Marvel and DC go, I, I totally agree with that. I think... Uh... I think you know Marvel announced several new books, so that was really cool. Um, but it was like you said, it was it was kind of like the stuff to build you up for the bigger stuff that we never actually got. And I think both of us by Saturday expected something to come out of the Marvel Studios panel, even though that's not comics. It's still, you know, it it could have delivered a wild factor if they announced something really huge. And neither Marvel or DC did anything with film really, except well, DC showed Wonder Woman and a, and a bit of footage. But they both have some footage. But Yeah, and Marvel, their big announcement that they're giving a sequel to Guardians of the Galaxy was kind of like a no-brainer at this point, especially because it was all very, very well received. Yeah, yeah, the the big announcement was the actual date for it, which was, okay, it's about the same time of year as this one, three years from now. That Yeah, that doesn't that's not a surprise <laughs> at all. <laughs> so. I, uh, but some news that really did uh, get me excited was uh, actually outside of Marvel and DC, mm-hmm. the um, next Transformers miniseries, which they're being very vague about IDW. Yeah. 
Combiner Wars. That looks really good. Hopefully Devastator will play a huge role in it. And it's going to somehow connect to the 30th anniversary figure line that they're doing. Yeah, yeah, and it's we we were looking extensively trying to find more information about this, but um, so far they have not released more information about this aside from these really big te- teases. We know that Transformers issues 39 through 41, and they don't specify if it's both series or if they're combining the series or what's going on there, and Windblade, and then they say it's going to be concluded with the toys, and it's like okay, we we just we don't have enough details to go on for this. So. Yeah, so I it's like it sounds really good, but yeah. we're well, not gonna know until there's more details. Yeah, and we're both huge fans of the Transformers books IDW is doing, and you know we yeah. did we've done the Transformers recaps. We you know we talked about them. I did you know I covered the whole Dark Cybertron thing on Dark Adventure Inc. and Comic Frontline. So yep, you know we're we're really excited for it. We just don't know what we're excited for yet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, other than that, the mention of Mayday Parker was another nice little tidbit of news. Yeah. Um, nothing really wow wowed me. I'll I'll say um, for me, just the the real standouts for me um, was all the Spider Man stuff. We got announced yeah. the the Spider Verse team up, which we're going to see various characters throughout the Spider Mythos. We're going to be seeing a uh, Spider Man Noir is going to be in there. Uh, Mady Parker, different different characters going to pop up in that. That's cool, and then we get the Scarlet Spiders uh, miniseries as well, which right. combine combines Kane and Ben Riley and the Ultimate uh, Universe. Um, uh, uh, Scarlet Spider there, so I mean, that was cool. And the Spider Woman series, like you mentioned, was we weren't expecting any more announcements and new stuff on Sunday, and we got that plus the Agents of Shield comic. So both of those were really cool for me. For me, I like the um, the Spider Man news, mm-hmm. but with Spider Verse, I kind of figured they were going to do more minis because let's let's face it, it's Marvel, right? So Marvel does that. So yeah, no, I mean they they did blow their big three announcements, which was the changes to Cap, Iron Man, and Thor right before the convention. Yeah, they shouldn't have done that. They should have waited for the convention and said, "Hey, these are the new three. Yeah. So you know. For for DC, they announced like pretty much nothing new comic wise that I can think of. No, and I noticed this at uh, New York Comic Con Special Edition too. Marvel was a huge presence when you walked into Special Edition. You walk down those steps, and Marvel's directly in front of you. Yeah. DC was nowhere. Yeah. No. So, yeah. Go ahead. I was just gonna say Marvel is. Making sure that it's a present, it at least has presence somewhere. Yeah. In every convention. And, uh, you know, I, this just hit me. You know, we, we've been really kind of critical of that on DC's part lately. Um, but one thing just hit me. They are in a transition trying to move their offices completely across country. And, you know, it, maybe it's not an excuse because that's still, you know, you know, whatever. But it could play into the fact that they're they're downplaying things at this point. Very true, but at the same time, I don't believe that. It's like you said, that's an excuse. Yeah. And it, what does it take to send somebody to a convention, especially if you're moving to California, where <laughs> San Diego is? <laughs> Very true. Uh, so, who knows? But um, outside of Marvel and DC, uh, IDW and not some really interesting stuff that kind of went under the radar completely. Um, we actually didn't find out about this until after the con, some of the stuff that they were putting out, including the Transformers stuff. Yep. Um, like, they're doing a Galaxy Quest comic, which was interesting. I mean, I'm not a huge Galaxy Quest fan, but it was interesting. I'll say that. Star Trek. Star Trek and the Planet of the Apes. Yeah, crossover with them. That's really interesting. Um, and we were talking about that. Anybody that's, like, a fan of either franchise, it, it makes sense to have that kind of crossover. Um... Garbage Pail Kids. Yeah, and next year's Garbage Pail Kids uh, 30th anniversary. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a huge grab for them. Another uh, franchise that they brought into the, into their uh, fold. IDW is huge, and, and they did really awesome work with every single franchise that turned 30 this year. Mm-hmm. I'm, I have faith in their Garbage Pail Kids also. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we already knew about some of the stuff prior to the con, like 
Angry Birds Transformers and Orphan Black, all that stuff was announced prior. Um, we did get they this this was also announced prior, but they are working with Comics Experience, um, mm-hmm. and they're bringing those talents into IDW, and they're also working with uh, Lion Forge to uh, print um, do print editions of some of their digital comics of uh, oh, what was it Airwolf and Night Rider, I think. Oh, sweet! Yeah, so. Uh, they're they're moving on all fronts, man. They're uh, they're doing a lot of interesting stuff, reaching beyond what they normally do. As they end certain licenses, like Doctor Who, they ended uh, last year. They're bringing on others, and yeah. Know, but didn't they, Doctor Who get picked up by somebody else? Titan. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, they actually. I think it was last week they released two new Doctor Who uh, comics. Titan or IDW? Titan. Yeah. Yeah, they they. Released the the eleventh Doctor and the tenth Doctor, I think. So, oh wow! Yeah, but IDW did you know, really cool announcements from them. Um, some other companies I was looking for their announcements and I couldn't find them. Like Valiant, I wanted to see what they talked about and stuff. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, I just I feel let down this year. I really do. Yeah. I feel like there there was so much potential. Mm-hmm. And I I will say one thing again. I love that. Uh, Marvel had a really great presence, and if you weren't at the convention, Marvel every day from the from the moment the convention opened to the moment the convention closed had a live stream going on. Yes, sometimes they repeated uh, stuff that was already on the live stream when there was downtime, yeah. but they were always on from start to finish. Yeah, and they also had uh, staff members live blogging every panel they did, and you can actually go on there right now and rewatch those live blogs. And just follow the news as it as it happened in real time, and that was really cool. Uh, so for those that weren't there, you could just get all the information that they were getting in in the panel. So Marvel, I think Marvel did great. Yeah, yeah. DC kind of dropped the ball. Uh, I agree. Been dropping the ball since special edition. I mean, there is a small convention where you can make a small mark. Marvel did. I mean, I don't know if you saw the video <clears throat> where I interviewed Mark, um, uh, David Marquez. Yeah. But, okay, so you saw in the background there was a – they didn't have to make any announcements. That All they had was a line. You get free prints, a free comic, which you can get signed because all the people that were on that comic were at the special edition. You had the eyeballs if you didn't get it at the comic event – if you didn't get it from your comic shop. Mm-hmm. And – you could do, and then there was that table on the side where the artists would pop up every now and again, all different uh, times, different artists, and you could talk to them. Yeah. You didn't even have to interview them. So, though Marvel didn't make any announcements, at the same time, they were a humongous presence, just like Valiant. Valiant was another big presence at yeah. uh, Special Edition. Yeah. But they wouldn't talk to us. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but you know, it's. DC really needs to pick that back up. I don't know what their deal is right now. Um, Five years in the future, apparently. Yeah, I guess. Got some other interesting stuff going on from other uh, other places, but a lot of a lot of uh, stuff that wasn't like again, it wasn't blowing me away stuff, but it was some interesting stuff like the new King, uh, King Kong movie, Skull Island. Oh yeah, that I I saw that at like three in the morning, and I gave you that for comic related. Yeah, and uh, you know, Legendary Pictures, and you know, we're talking about several films they're doing. They uh, they all looked interesting, so that was cool. Robert Kirkman is doing a film with Norman Reedus, who uh, is in The Walking Dead, uh, called Air. So that's interesting. Uh, it's from Skybound, actually. So you know, now they're doing movies. <laughs> so that's good. And one thing yesterday that we were talking about on the live show that I I didn't get a chance to finish with, mm-hmm. um, we were talking about Hercules in the movie theater because The Rock keeps dropping hints that he's going to be in some movie and everybody's saying he's going to be Black Adam mm-hmm. and they're worried about Hercules. Um, for those of you that don't didn't know, for people who were listening to this on the Zone 4 podcast channel and not on my channel, yeah. the first company that ever reached out to me um, for um, sponsorship was actually Radical. Mm-hmm. And they sent me almost every single series they had. Yeah. And Hercules and Aladdin were my two favorites from that uh, line. Oh, cool. So I didn't get to see the movie yet, but comparing The Rock to the Hercules that was in the comic book, 
eh. And we did have another Hercules movie. But if the movie stayed true to what the comic book was, regardless of The Rock being Hercules, it's it's good. I don't think the movie was a fail like everybody says. It just went up against Scarlett Johansson, yeah. who basically everybody has a crush on. Yeah. I like The Rock. But, and then I don't have a crush on the rock. I don't have a crush on Scarlett Johansson either. she's not my type but uh, <laughs> I'm just saying I, I like the rock in movies so I you know sorry Scarlett if you're listening to this <laughs> yeah, sorry Ryan doesn't dig you I, I don't I never did actually I don't get the appeal honestly but that's just me I'll explain to you the two appeals at no, the end no of the I show. get that appeal I'm, but that's not what I Never mind. <laughs> Into that. Jessica Alba. There we go. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> any day of the week. Uh, any anyway. day of the day. <laughs> Several times of the day. All right. That's not what I meant, but whatever. Okay. Ah. <laughs> I don't even know where to go from this. Star Wars comics. Mar- yes. That was my favorite announcement. It wasn't my favorite announcement, but it was cool. I mean, we knew it was coming. We just didn't yeah. know if it was going to be done right or not. And hearing that Jason Aaron's going to be doing the main series and Mark Wade's going to be doing a Princess Leia book, we won't mention the other guy. Uh, but um, Tyrion Gillen's going to ruin Darth Vader. No. Hold on, wait. <laughs> I, actually, I, I talked to Darth Vader today. Uh huh. Um. Yeah, this is before we started recording, and um, we were chatting a bit, and I told him, you know, you you have a new comic coming out, and he was excited. He was really happy, and then he said, so who's writing it? And I said, Kieran Gillen. He has no idea who Kieran Gillen is, so he's like, well, well, what what else did he do? Uh, I told him about the failed Iron Man, and he got scared, Uh, and then we got into the whole, if this thing would move, I have to get to my recorder. To show to let you hear his reaction, so give me a second. Then you talked about the whole Young Avengers thing. I talked about the Young Avengers thing, and and um, I'm trying to find it. Did he do some image work too? I think he did an image series, and yeah. Yeah, well, no, I told him what they did in Young Justice alone, and it's not here. Really? Well, I mean, you told him. You probably told him about Iron Man with Arno, how this mysterious brother came appeared yeah, out I told nowhere. Him about Yep, I told him that Iron Man wasn't really Iron Man. And he's like, that's weird. Yeah. Uh, but the the real shocker was when I told him about the Young jo- the uh, Oh, Young, young Justice. Yes, yeah, Young Avengers. Yeah, so I told him about the Young Avengers, the whole series. I didn't tell him anything, you know, till you know, I gave him the full rundown from first issue to last. Mm-hmm. And then I got to that last issue. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, let's see. This was his, uh, let me get the volume up because I don't know if it was down. There. This was his initial reaction when I told him that he was the writer on his book. Yeah. (laughs) That was a lot of playing up to that. Yeah, we we could we could we could shave that down if you could. But on a lighter note, Chewie said, "My sentiments exactly." You're not allowed to say that because you you don't believe in life day. We're not talking about that. <laughs> I still say, if Eric ever makes a pop vinyl series for New Comic Day, your character has to wear a Life Day shirt. Oh, no. And be angry about it. Bookies. Uh, Thank you, Eric. You (laughs) gave us something that will have years worth of potential. (laughs) Oh, man. So, um... But I have faith in the in the Star Wars series because it looks like they're following right after what Dark Horse is doing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's set in the same time period. The uh, you know they're keeping the the tradition of solid creative teams well, for for the most part um, on the books. Um, you know, hopefully they they can live up to that hype because they've got a they got big shoes to fill. In yeah. my opinion, so. do you do you think they'll ever do miniseries like what Dark Horse did? 
I think Leia's a miniseries, actually. Leia is, and so is Darth Vader, I believe. Okay. So, yes. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, like, miniseries that are, like, time-spanning. Like, for example, what's going on right now with Darth Maul, Rebel Heist. You know what I mean? Different places in time. I think that if they can match the success that Dark Horse has had with the Star Wars line, that they will do more of them. That's all I can really say. I think if, uh, you know, Marvel with licensed properties, they, I don't know, they just, they're very uh, conservative with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but at the same time, we've seen Dark Tower miniseries pop up for the past, what, seven years? And they're doing really good. Yeah, so, I mean, it just depends on how well it does. If it if it's selling well, they'll keep keep pushing them out, and I think we could see uh, minis like that. Yeah. And if it fails, Dark Horse can always get their contract back and fix everything. Oh, yes. Pray wise, yes. Or maybe even IDW get a hold of it someday. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> that Star would be awesome. Star Wars meets Transformers. <laughs> oh yes. The Death Star becomes Unicron. That would be amazing. So, let's have to wait and see. Anything else that just really stood out to you that you want to talk about? Because I'm trying hard to think, uh, aside from... Not, not really. Oh, they did give uh, the Batman, uh, the Adventures of Batman mm-hmm. DVD set, Blu-ray set. They gave prices finally for it. DVD 150 and Blu-ray nearly $200, or over $200, because of all the extras, which basically are books. Yeah. And a, and a Hot Wheel car. Yeah. I'm sticking with the DVDs if I get it at all. <laughs> oh, one thing. Uh, the Lock and Key uh, movie, it's going to be a trilogy. Yes. So that's really cool. I'm excited for that. I can't that's, wait to see that. Yeah. That's good because it was about eight books. Mm-hmm. So figure about two, four, six, uh, three, six, mm, two and a half in each uh I think you could do two two books in each one, and then the last one you kind of just stuff everything in at the end. Yeah. Or you yeah. could make one of the books shorter and just stuff it in with like two other books. Either way, I, I just I, I I just can't wait to see it. I I'm, I was so ready for that TV show, and then it got you know it didn't get picked up, and uh, I just can't wait for a Lock and Key movie. I want to see it now. Did they give a date, or they didn't give a date? I doubt it. Um, let's see. I am happy oh. they mentioned Godzilla three while you're looking for the two. date. Two. Yeah. Godzilla two, but the only thing is, um, I hope we see more Godzilla this time. Surely, <laughs> surely we would. Uh, no, no date. Okay. Either way, when it comes out, I'll be getting it because mm-hmm. I love the book series. Did you yeah. read the book series finally, or still? I'm. I still haven't finished the last one, the last series. Okay. When you finish it, you're gonna love it. Yeah, I'm sure. No spoilers. I, I love most of it, so you know. I was surprised. Somebody recommended that book to me. I said, "Yeah, we'll see." And I think three other people did. And I, I finally caved and got the first book. Mm-hmm. And now I have the first four in hardcover, or five, four, four or five in hardcover, and the rest I have all in solo issues. Yeah, yeah, I was the same way. I didn't. I I came onto it late and had to backtrack, and kind of fell in love with it that way. Yeah, I think it was better because there was already like three or four books out, so it gave me a lot to read. Yeah. As opposed to reading just the first book, I think if I read just the first book. I probably wouldn't have been as in- I would have been interested, but not as interested because there was more behind it. Yeah. Plus, I if I remember correctly, I don't remember which books it was between, but I think there was a delay between certain uh, certain books of it. Either Headcase or Shadow Play. Yeah. So I mean, I, I could understand losing interest if you didn't have it. You know. And then towards the end, there was a huge delay with Alpha and Omega. Right. So. Either way, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And that's I, all we got for San Diego? I think so. I'm trying, I'm trying to rack my brain and see if there's anything else. I know they showed a lot of trailers, which I have not gotten to watch yet, except for the Arrow one. Um, Arrow was really good. Yeah. Uh, I will say, I, I did watch uh, little snippets of uh, of the Arrow panel and of the... Um, 
of the Avengers panel and one other, and I can't think of which one it was. But we we've been all the rest of this week on comic related. We found a, a YouTube channel that actually has the full panel videos mm-hmm. of a bunch of the. It's mainly the TV shows and movies. Uh, but if you're interested in any of those, uh, our listeners, um, go check them out because some of them are really funny. There's some funny stuff that happens and some, you know, you know. Ooh. All right, go ahead, finish yours. I I, I really I remember something. No, go ahead. I, I, that's all I was pretty much saying. Some of the if you know the personalities that are on some of them, like Robert Downey Jr. and stuff like that, there's some funny stuff that happens on some of these panels. So you might want to watch them because it's better to watch them than to read it sometimes. So. Mm. Connecting to Hall of Toys next episode, there were a lot of awesome toys announced. There is a Spider-Man figure line mm-hmm. with Mae Parker as one of the figures that looks spectacular. I will def- This is the first one I'll actually pre-order to make sure I get every single figure at the right price. Yeah. The NECA stuff, uh, continuing with Terminator... And their um, video game line, their 64-bit or 18-bit figure line, and um, their Terminator Alien 18-bit lines. Awesome, awesome stuff from NECA. There was announcements about Turtle stuff. It's There's just a lot of really awesome toys that are going to be coming out soon as well. And then there was a huge display with all the Iron Man armors. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, tons of toy stuff. We'll definitely be talking about that on the uh, next Hall of Toys. No doubt. I think so. Yep. Ish. <laughs> Ish. We gotta get Lisa on that one. Uh, we'll see. But, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, that's all the major stuff, so... We just wanted to touch on everything and not really go into a lot of details. So. Right. For more details, check out Zone 4, episode... 280. Wow, I'm gonna be on a on a eight. Wow, that's yeah. Cool. Sorry. I'm on a beginning one. <laughs> so 80, 85, and ninety. There I you gotta, go. <laughs> and then ninety five, and then definitely got to be on the the that's three hundred. No, you're not allowed. <laughs> no. I'll probably be there anyway. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Hopefully, we'll get everybody on the three hundred. We'll see. That would be awesome. So before we get into the rundown this week, actually, before I forget, because I was about to jump from the San Diego Comic Con into the <laughs> into the, the rundown, we actually do have two comics to discuss this week. We have Amazing Spider-Man, issue number four, and Superman, number 33. Yes. Let's start with Amazing Spider-Man. Well, I really like this issue, Brand. I like the direction. Uh... Of course, it starts off with the whole original sin beginning where, you know, Spider-Man gets that Omega Red call and shows up with the Avengers, gets blasted with the Watcher's eye, and then all of a sudden he sees things he's not, he, you know, he never knew it was a sin from the past involving Ezekiel, which I wish that man would go away and never come back. <laughs> uh, but it involves, he finds out that Cindy, uh, about the existence of Cindy Moon, mm-hmm. who is a.k.a. the, um, so. well, not the, uh, Silk. Yeah. And she was also bitten by the radioactive spider. She has different powers from Peter. She's faster than him. She's not stronger than him. Their spider sense works about the same, and she can produce her own webbing. Yeah, I think her spider sense is a little bit faster. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, like you said, Peter's got her on strength. He's got, she's got Peter on speed. And she, I don't know what else going on with her, <laughs> but she. Oh, one thing with her with their webs that she produces, they have like little barbs at the end. Too. Yeah, she can make them into like barbs. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed this issue as well. I I've really enjoyed this series, you know, so far. Uh, but this issue was really fun. Uh, you know, meeting her, learning about her, the whole way they handled the differences between the two, and. Uh, you know, the, the little recap of Original Sin was nice for people that aren't reading the main series, but at the same time, it was a little bit overdone, I thought. Just that one little part. But The ending was rushed, I feel. I feel we could have seen the ending at the in the next issue, like in the middle of the next issue, the beginning of the next issue even. I just feel like that scene should have been saved. I, I understand that criticism, and uh, I know you're not alone in that 
sentiment, but for me, I even though it does feel a little bit rushed at the same time, it was like the way I read it was Silk, her, her entire life since high school has pretty much been in this bunker. And she's basically trying to live every aspect of her life in an instant. And everything is just going crazy. Her, you know, call it her hormones, her pheromones, whatever you want to call it, are just bouncing off the wall. She wants to experience this and that and this and that. And plus there is this, this, uh, this attraction between the two, they're drawn to each other for reasons that we don't yet know, but it seems like that's the way they're heading this chemical thing. Uh, and so it kind of made sense how rushed it was because of how uh, how off kilter she was. Right. So. Well, also my sentiments, I my, half of me agrees with you, and another that half actually is saying Spider Verse is coming. So you got to tell this story quickly sure. because then we're jumping into Spider Verse. And Silk is technically going into Spider Woman. Yeah, very true. You're so right. that's kind of why the rush, I feel. Mm -hmm. And also, we're only getting Spider Man once a month, all the way until October now. So we've got what? This is we're already in uh, July. Next book is coming in August. August, September. So two two more issues we'll get before. Right. Yeah. And then we're gonna get Spider Verse, and that's when they're gonna start doubling up again. So basically, they just gotta take their time doing the original Sin story. Yeah. Much. And the Black Cat part was ignorable. To be honest, at this point, I really could care less what Black Cat's doing. You know that at some point she's going to change her point of view or whatever. Yeah, it, it was funny in the last issue how um, how Peter pretended like he was still Doc Ock to get her away. So, I, you know, in the, in the last issue with Black Cat, I thought that was yeah. funny. But, yeah, I didn't want to see her in this issue. I kind of wanted to wait a couple of beats and then have her come back after all this other stuff, because there's no reason to introduce her at this point uh, before Spider-Verse, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't know. I think Silk is going to become the new Black Cat if Black Cat and Pete ever, you know, don't end up doing stuff anymore. Yeah. Very true. It's, well, it definitely seems that way from the last page. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we also learned that Moreland... Are we spoiling... Yeah. Okay. It's been out for two weeks almost. Yeah. yeah. We're also learning that Moreland is uh, still alive and he's coming for them and he calls her the Spider Bride, so there's obviously something going on there. So, interesting stuff going on. I thought it was a fun issue, though. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, another really great issue going on the other end is DC Comics, and that's Superman 33. I really, you know, I haven't liked Superman since the new 52. Jeff Johns is just, he is fixing so many mistakes they made with Superman, it's not even funny. Yeah. First, you got him back at the Daily Planet, you got Perry White trying to force him to come back. Mm -hmm. You have Lois Lane showing that there's still some type of an attraction for Superman. Right. You got Jimmy Olsen being Jimmy Olsen, Perry White being Perry White. And you have, at the end of the issue, somebody saying that Superman needs to be alone, quote-unquote, for now. And the way they killed Superman's parents in a car accident, of all things, it doesn't make sense. So there it, there could be a retcon coming for that. There could be. Or it could be jor or it could be a villain. We don't know at this point, but it's interesting. That's the that's the real, you know, thing yes. you take away from this. It's interesting. It's intriguing. It, it makes you want to find out what's going on. And I think the way that they handled the whole Ulysses thing was really... It was a twist that I wasn't expecting. I mean, I didn't expect him not to be still alive and all that stuff, but I didn't expect that to end so, okay, well, it's a happy ending. I'm back home with my parents, and that's that, and move on to the next thing, which was kind of refreshing in a way. Yeah. Because it wasn't like, oh, we're going to drag this Ulysses thing out forever and, you know, that kind of thing like we've been getting. So I, I found that refreshing personally. Absolutely. I think the book was really good. It's mm -hmm. the best Superman book out there right now. And we did find out, thank you, San Diego, that this takes place after Superman Doom. Yeah, there's no way it could take place during the, the Superman. Well, we didn't know if it was before or during. Right, exactly. Yeah, the, that's what I was about to say. The Superman books up to this point have been very confusing continuity-wise. Yeah, because it took place in different places of time. Exactly. So it's good to know. For sure, but uh, yeah, this is solid. I mean, the only 
you know, nitpick we really have uh, with this book, period, is the art. And it's not even Remita Jr.'s worst art. No, he's done a lot worse. Read Avengers. Yeah. So. Uh, he still can't draw somebody flying, but he's done worse. I will say that. Yeah, he's. I mean, there's still certain panels that's like, oh my god, that's awful. But. <laughs> yeah, both books, Amazing Spider Man and Superman, get a four and a half out of five from me. Uh, yeah, totally agree from both. So, there you go. Well, there you go, and that's our reviews for this week, guys. So now, we'll officially go into the rundown. All right, Brent, you want to start us off with Dark Horse? Sure. All right, uh, going down, uh, we're still going down, like, saying what we're interested in, then reading the rest, right? Okay. Make sure the format's still right. Um, okay, there's nothing I'm interested in, so... <laughs> wow, Angel and Faith 5 and Usagi Yajimbo Senso, number one. I've never read a Usagi Yajimbo comic ever, so... Because of Turtles, I did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but yeah, okay. So aside from those two, we also have Michael Avon Oming's The Victories, Volume 2, Number 14. And that's it for the single issues, rest or trades. <laughs> <laughs> so not much for Dark Horse. <laughs> no, it's a short week for Dark Horse. Yeah. So we're in DC Comics, and it's a new month. We are in August 2nd, by the way. I forgot to mention that at the beginning. Yes. Uh, with a new month comes a new variant cover. The new variant covers for this month are DC Universe selfie covers. Uh, I'm only getting one. Let me take a selfie. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> but for me, Action Comics 34, the annual number three, uh, Batman Essentials Dark Knight Special Edition number one. This is the first of the 75th anniversary celebration. I'll be getting that. Batman Eternal. Earth 2, which I did not get the selfie one. Thank God. Grayson. Uh, Sorry. Race in number two I'll be getting. I got the selfie of Green Lantern just because I hate the Green Lantern cover. Oh my Regular god, one. let me take a selfie. <laughs> Every time. Every time. Superman Wonder Woman annual number one. I love how we just had an annual week this Wednesday. Now we're getting another annual week. Joy. Yeah. It's crazy. Messed up. And I think that's it for me. What about you, Brant? Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> Batman Eternal, like you, uh, definitely. Yep. Uh, da, 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 Grayson agreed. Um, I think we like the same books this week. New 52 features in. Yes, I left that one for Number you, yeah. 14, yeah. And that's it. All right, so running through the rest of the books, we have... Yeah, that too. That too, yes. Okay, Tommy we took a have, selfie. <laughs> Tommy took a selfie. We have Aquaman and the Others, number five. Batman 66 meets Green Hornet, number three. Batwing 34, Detective Comics 34, which I dropped both of those a while back. Um, Green Arrow 34, which Michael loves. Justice League 3000 number 9, Looney Tunes 220 for the kids, Swamp Thing 34, Tiny Titans Return to the Treehouse number 3 for the kids, and, oh, sorry, wait, Trinity of Sin, Phantom Stranger number 22, and from Vertigo we have Ferris 28 and Hinterkind number 10. Cool. All right, heading into Dynamite, because it's Dynamite. Um... <laughs> Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. No, 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 no. Give me something, please. <laughs> nothing. Blood Queen wow. number one was good. Was it? I didn't read it. Yeah, Blood Queen number one was good. Um, and that's all I got. Wow. Crazy. Okay, so going back to the top of the list, after Blood Queen we have Captain Victory and the Galactic Rangers, Volume 3, number one. I don't even know what that is. Uh, I don't Chaos number four. We have Chastity number two. We have uh, Deja of Mars number 
No, that's never mind. That's yeah. yeah uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Flash Gordon, Volume Seven, Number Four. We have Game of Thrones, Number Twenty One. We have Jennifer Blood, Born Again, Number One. Jim Butcher's Dresden Files, War Cry, Number Three. The Shadow, Midnight in Moscow, Number Three. Our brand new series, Terminal Hero, Number One. We got Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Echoes, number two. Mike hated that. Really? Yeah. yeah that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, Pamparella, volume five, number three. That's it. IDW, I'm looking forward to G.I. Joe 205, Real American Hero 205. Yes. Um, Star Mage, number five. I don't need thinking music, Tommy. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And Transformers Robots in Disguise 31. Identical to mine. So, there you go. <laughs> okay, the rest. Angry Birds comic number three. Classic Popeye number 25. Haunted Horror number 12. Mars Attacks Firstborn number three. Rogue Trooper Classics number four. Squitter number two. Star Trek, oh no, that's a that's a book, is it? No, it looks like a one shot. Star Trek: New Visions, Time Echo, yeah. one shot. Uh, and that's it. Yeah. So we're now an image. All right, image, 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 image. Um, Invincible number one thirteen. Uh, Lazarus number ten. And that's it for me. Invisible number 13, uh, 113 for me too, so that's all. Alright, so we also have Alex plus Ada, number 8. We've got Clone, number 19. We've got Hack slash Son of Sam- Samhain, number 2. We've got How Ta- Tunes, if I can talk. Reignition, number 1. We've got Imperial, number 1. Uh, Madam Frankenstein, number 4. Don't touch that book. Uh, Nailbiter, number 4, uh, which Mike Spider Slayer likes. Uh, Night World number one. Uh, we have Spread number two. Tales of Honor number four. We've got Tech Jacket volume two number two. Oh, that's another one. Tech Jacket it was really good. Oh, was it? Okay, cool. Um, we got Cyber Force volume four number ten. Genius number one. And that's it. So. Okay, so we're now in Marvel. The books I'm looking forward to are Legendary Star Lord number two, Miles Morales Ultimate Spider Man number four, New Warriors number eight, hoping things get better, Rocket Raccoon number two, Superior Spider Man number thirty two. I'm glad to see that coming back just to see its connection to Spider Verse because that means Spider Verse is officially beginning. Yeah. No, maybe. No, yes, I, I didn't know you were asking me a question. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Yes. And that's all I got. What about you, Brant? Okay, uh, all of those. And I will add... Uh, where did I see it? Original Sin number 5.3. Um, and I dropped that. Really? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, it's uh, money issues, but yeah, he dropped it. Gotcha. Superior Foes of Spider-Man number 14. He got that, Michael. Yeah. So, that's it. All right, we have oh, Black oh, Widow. Yeah, I'm sorry. Black Widow. <laughs> that was the other one I was looking for. Okay, so, moving on then. Deadpool, Dracula's Gauntlet number 5. Disney Kingdom's Figment number 3. Iron Fist Living Weapon number 5. Miracle Man number 9 with several covers. Moon Knight number 6. New Avengers 22. Original New Sin. original, huh? Original Sin, yeah, the Karen Gillan one. Yeah, original Sin 3.4. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you said Punisher. So moving on. She Hulk number seven. Uh, from Icon we have Kickass number uh Kickass three number eight. Painkiller Jane, 22 Brides, number two, and that's it. So now all that's left are the indies. Brant. All right. 
What are you looking forward to out of all those things? Let's see. Um. Uh, good lord. Give me something. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Dude, I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I'm talking, so it doesn't sound like I'm just going on and on. I'm There's a lot of stuff. It. Harbinger Omegas, number one. Okay. Finally found one. Thank you. Uh, man. No, no, no that's it. <laughs> All right, well, for me, Sonic Universe 66... Um, I will agree with you on the um, Harbinger. Garfield 28, my guilty pleasure, as always. Um, got to move down, got to move down. You know what I noticed with the... the I want to see if they have it, though. No, they don't. I noticed that last month, all the uh, Valiant books had the Chromium cover. Hmm. I don't know if you noticed that. I did not. I actually would love to go back and get all of them, but it would come to like $25. Yeah. Um, Grim Fairy Tales presents Goddess Inc. number one, and Grim Fairy Tales presents Masumi number one. Which awesome. There are two covers for Masumi that are the first cover A and cover C. I can't pick between the two, honestly. What about you, Brant? Uh, for Masumi? Yeah. I like... B, I think. Really? Yeah. <laughs> or no, no. No, D. I like D. D was another one, I, but that one was easier for some weird reason to pass up. Weird. I don't know why. I don't like A. That was my point. <laughs> you don't like C? Not really. It's just uh, I don't know. I, I like the the face. I love the artist that did the the face, and it looks okay. familiar. Gotcha. So that's it for the indies. That's right. it for everything. Can can I do a couple of honorable mentions? Yes, absolutely. Okay. These are series that I'm way behind on, but I I do want to support. Rachel Rising number twenty seven. Uh, people should check out that series. And uh, <laughs> Six Gun Days of the Dead number one, which is a new uh, new spinoff series of the Six Gun, which is a fantastic series as well. Cool. That's it, though. All right, guys. So that's it for this week's. It's a podcast. It's great to be back, Brand. Thanks for coming on for the whole show this time. Talk about San Diego and everything. My pleasure. Glad to be here. Although, when it comes to solicits, you're basically always on the shows where I do solicits, so this way I have somebody to talk to so I don't sound crazy talking to myself about it. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. It does work out. And since we're doing this late, we're probably going to be doing another solicits episode in, what, two, three weeks? Yeah, about <clears throat> So I'll, we'll be seeing Brant back on the show full-time in about two weeks. ba 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 da da Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Before we close out the show, um, really quickly, guys, as always, um, I was uh, very busy the past couple of weeks, and that's why there was no show. So, unfortunately, the streak of shows definitely died uh, over the past month, and it's all my fault. I'm, I take full blame. I, I undertook a lot of work at once, <clears throat> and I over um, – I over uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Exerted, committed – Overcommitted my, I will say committed, but it's something else. But I overcommitted myself, <clears throat> and I left myself a stockpile's worth of work that I had to catch up on and finish before I could actually get back to the regular stuff. So that won't happen again. Uh, and that's also why I haven't been posting too much on Comic Frontline, but that also will be um, uh, changing starting with this week. Uh, so huge apologies, everybody. I know a few of you guys and gals out there have been asking when the next episode's up, so it's here. It's live, finally, and I just made it to the 10 that I needed to make it to um, have my podcast um, submitted to um, the Comments. superhero 
Fox uh, Podcast Network. It's a comics podcast, which I'm sure Brand forgot to do. I will. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I I I stopped. I wanted to wait till I was back to posting anyway, so this way it didn't look like I stopped at ten. Let's see. There you go. So it all works out. Yay! Rainbows and puppy dogs. And now I want to do a really quick. This is the first time I'm doing a um a shout out. No, sorry. <laughs> oh, good. No, do that because I, I want to put the shout out music in right there. And then oh, yeah. uh, there you go. Uh, and this random shout out goes to somebody. Um, she hasn't been on YouTube for a while. She actually just started doing videos again. And she's so close to 100 subscribers. I really want to help um, her out. She's a really awesome artist. And ironically, I found her channel uh, through a video that was actually posted, Brent, on Comic Related. On you the, don't uh, say. I do say. <laughs> yeah, on the yeah. art section. Yeah, it was on the it was on the uh, sketch uh, magazine blog that we have on Comic Related. And um, I, it was uh, I believe it was the sketch of Poison Ivy, and I, I saw the sketch and I really liked it. And um, I was a huge fan of watching Lisa Flat when she used to do it live on um, whatever uh, that live place was. Live stream. Live stream. There you go. And. Um, so I, I really enjoyed watching it, so I went and checked out a couple of her other um, sketch videos, and they're really awesome. She just got back on YouTube. She's doing a few. She just did a sketching and a coloring of Elsa from um, Frozen, but it's her take on it. Mm-hmm. Really nice. She's a really cool person, and um, if you guys can, you can check her out. Her channel is youtube.com backslash Miss Rika. That's M S R I K. I want to make sure I got it right. Mm-hmm. Um, A, 1996. 1916. Uh, I'm going to say it again because I took a pause. M S R I K A 1996. It'll be in the show notes. It'll be in the description. Check her channel out. Give her a sub. She's a really awesome artist. I love her art style. I love watching her um, inking and coloring and drawing. Uh, her artwork, she's really, really good. I'm a huge fan of hers, and every time she has a video up, I definitely check it out because it's fun, like I said, to watch her. And hopefully Lisa will be doing another live coloring slash flatting soon. But uh, definitely check out Miss Rika. Give her a sub. Send her some comments. Send her some likes. Enjoy her videos. And uh, tell her the Dark Avenger sent you. And Brant, too, because Brant's the reason why I found her in the first place. There you go. But again, she's a really awesome YouTuber and I would and a really awesome artist. Definitely deserves the recognition and the subs, for sure. You'll enjoy what you see, guys. And that's it for the shout outs. So Brent, you got anything coming up this week? Uh, just to remind everybody again about Zone Four, where we uh, go into more detail about some of the select San Diego Comic Con news. You can look for that on Friday on ComicRelated.com. And uh, I will say. Those that usually watch uh, or listen to Zone 4 via Comic Frontline, I know the last three episodes are missing. I will gradually get those up there as well as the latest Hall of Toys. It's just been hectic. So. Well, you've been moving, so it's understandable. Uh, there you go. Um, at some point, um, what do you call it? Uh, hopefully we'll be doing a Hall of Toys soon, which will be covering everything from San Diego. We had a great time doing Hall of Toys last time. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't realize what you miss until you actually do it again, and... It was fun doing Hall of Toys, and there's so much more still to cover, and that's going to be coming out to cover. So yeah, and we we got an announcement coming up about that too. So yes, yeah. oh yes, I Brant actually sent me an an idea last night that I think is absolutely uh, a spectacular idea. Of course, we want to keep it on iTunes for those of you that listen to iTunes, and we want to keep it on Zone Four Podcast and as a podcast for those of you that enjoy just listening. Um, to the podcast through Zone 4 Podcast or iTunes, but we're, we're definitely looking to expand um, to build up Hall of Toys. Yeah. Uh, let's, and also... What? Oh, no, good. Finish your thought, but don't give the announcement yet. <laughs> I'm not giving the announcement. Oh, no. We're just looking to build up Hall of Toys. That's what I was going to say. Make it bigger okay. and better and more interactive for you guys. Okay, that's that's cool. Um, we'll be dropping teases uh, throughout the remaining episodes. The, the big announcement will be, I don't know if we want to, we'll, we'll decide. We'll let you know on the next Hall of Toys when we'll be ma- making the announcement. 
So. Right. So stay tuned for Hall of Toys for that. But Hall of Toys will be coming up soon, like I said, because August is literally one day away. By the time this goes up, um, Friday is August 1st. Mm-hmm. So give or take either next Tuesday or the following Tuesday will be the next Hall of Toys anyway. So you'll find out there. Um, one big announcement is going to be coming out of Brooklyn Boys soon about Epic Story. Uh, Brent, I will say this. I can say this because I'm the um, the writer on the series, so I have the right to say whatever I want and spoil whatever I want. Brent will actually be helping behind the scenes, uh, me doing a little bit of the writing, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Who knows? We might have some cameo videos, um, little uh, parts in Epic Story with Brent and see. maybe with other people. So it's going to be a very interesting series. I did give Brent the outline a little bit before the show, and um, I didn't hear any, ugh, that sounds stupid, so <laughs> I'm going to take it as good. So you, got, you guys have a lot to look forward to. Let me just leave it at that. The announcement's probably going to be this weekend on oh. Broken Boys 13. Awesome. And with that, that's the show. Thank you again, Brent, for being on. Yep. Guys, I- huh? Oh. I was just, <laughs> I was saying thanks for having me. Oh, it's always a pleasure having you on. And guys, don't forget to check out Comic Related Comic Frontline and Zone 4 Podcast, your number one source for comic related news, reviews, and a whole bunch more. Comic Related and Comic Frontline killed it this year with the San Diego Comic Con news. How many articles do we have all together, Brent? Oh, by by the end of this week, it's probably going to be around two thirty, two forty. Wow! So that's a lot of. We basically, if you couldn't make it to San Diego. You basically got your I was there without being there coverage. Exactly. So check it out. Between the two sites, we covered everything. And I still have stuff that I'm going to be posting uh, and other stuff after the convention I'm going to be posting tonight, maybe tomorrow because it's getting late and I have a few other things I have to do. But look forward to that. Uh, also, don't forget to check out Miss Rika, youtube.com backslash M-S-R-I-K-A-1-9. Nine six. Give her a sub. Tell her I sent you, and enjoy her video. She's a really awesome artist. I'm positive you guys like watching people draw ink and color. You're gonna love her as much as I do. And yeah, so I guess this is the part of the show where we cue the outro. Join us next time for another episode of. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a podcast. Did you give him his thing to put in his mouth, Cindy? What ring? The ring that shuts him up. (laughs) This one? No, yes. The ring that shuts him up. What's that? Oh, it's the ring that shuts him up because it's ice. One ring to find them, and in the darkness find them. One ring to shut them up. <laughs> <laughs> you shall not pass the fire. <laughs> Yay! Tommy's got his you will not pacifier in his mouth. Let's <laughs> pacifier before it's too late. Hey, everybody out there! <laughs> I do it! I do it! Because that's not my intro anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm good now. This has been a Ventura production.